Hey folks, hope everybody's doing well. Well, it's only been maybe a year and a half or so since Nick came out with Collection 7, but they've already come out with now Nick 8. And a lot of things have changed, some of them very minor, some of them pretty significant. So I'm going to go through the major changes today, and I'll do some videos later on kind of deep diving into some of the individual programs. So the first change that you're probably going to notice is the way that you access Nick from within Photoshop. So I used to use the Nick Selective tool. I really liked it. I thought it was super handy, except for one thing. It was always in the way. And so unless you minimized it completely, which made it so small, it, it almost disappeared sometimes, um, it, it kind of got in the way and I was constantly moving it around. So that tool is now gone. So when you first look at Nick Ape, when you first open it, you have to go to your plugins and then Nick Ape, and you have to open each one of these individually into your uh, plugin panel. Now that's only, you only have to do this once. Next time you open up Photoshop, they'll all be there uh, handy for you. So I have a whole bunch of plugins here, clearly, but I like to keep things kind of arranged in the order that I use them. And I'm really only going to load the NIC uh, tools that, that I use most frequently because I really just don't need to be cluttering this up anymore <laughs> than it already is. It's kind of bad. So in the interest of saving a little bit of space, um, I'm just going to do, you know, typically maybe define color effects, silver effects, and maybe my output sharpener, but I don't typically use the input sharpener, uh, the raw sharpener, because I'm doing that type of work in either camera raw or Lightroom. But you arrange these however you want. You can drag them around within this panel. You can expand and minimize this panel and just make it convenient to how you work. All right, so if I open up, say, color effects, I can just straight up open the program. I can go down to my last edits, my favorites. So I've got last edit, presets, filters. So click on presets. Those are the ones that I've created. Filters. Um, all of the favorites were saved the last time that I worked in this program. So I can choose one of those. Uh, but this time around, I'm just going to click open, which is where most people would start if they're new to the program. For the most part, the interface looks pretty much the same. You've got uh, presets that you can click on over here and filters, any of your last 15 edits or so, and a history. Again, not going to walk through this whole software. All right, first thing you might notice is that the brush icon is gone. So within Photoshop, we can now just send it as a layer. Layers are created. Multiple layers may require more processing. And you also have a way to apply these. So you can send it to the active layer, send it as a new layer, new layer with a mask, or a smart object. I typically would do a smart object. And if you click on preferences, this is how you access the preferences in here. So you get all of them. So not just layer preferences or export preferences. I would export a TIFF. That is another thing that you may notice up here. It used to just have a quick export. Now you can choose whether that is a JPEG or a TIFF. It used to just be a JPEG. And again, preferences are accessed here. Export, 16-bit, no compression, or a JPEG, whichever one you prefer. And you can add it to the original image folder, or you can browse for a custom folder. Default, new layer. I might just say go ahead and default as a smart object, because that's what I typically do anyway. So just save me a step. And here is where I can send it to any of the other NIC products within the NIC collection. All right, let's make some changes. Let's do something just kind of basic, maybe a little tonal contrast, but I don't necessarily want to add it to the background, so I'm going to add an option or an alt key to this control point. Again, I'm not going to do a complete walkthrough here, Let's just do some basics. One thing that you will notice in the local adjustments is we now have a new one. Add a color mask. 
which is pretty cool. So let's do something a little bit more obvious here. We'll add a black and white conversion. Say for whatever reason, I only want the black and white to be, say, on the wood. So I'm going to take this add a color mask and I'm going to click on the wood. It grabs most of the photo because we've got so many similar tones in here. So I'm going to click on that mask and kind of drag this around until I see it mostly affecting the wood. And then I'm going to come down to these other sliders and make some more adjustments. So if I stretch these little sliders, you see how they're kind of going together. I can unlink those if I want. So once they're unlinked, now if I drag one, the other one does not go along with it. So you can very highly specialize your masks in this way. It's actually a really cool addition. Probably one of the coolest new features is the ability to take advantage of Photoshop's masking abilities and selective tools within the Nix software. So um, let me just duplicate my background here and I'm going to say select subject. And Photoshop has gotten incredible at being able to detect subjects. So let me add that as a mask and then I'm going to open up color effects and it's going to ask me this new question. I'm going to say I'm going to select all. So the background copy and the layer on top that has the mask. I'm going to click open. So let's do something fun like sunlight. So I'm going to add that filter. Now I have this new button right here, import masks. So if I click on that, I'm going to say, yep, let's add that Photoshop mask. And now the new mask for the sunlight filter is only being applied to the alligator. Let's check it out. So woo, there it is. How? cool is that? I wouldn't necessarily do sunlight, but, mm. but let's invert it. Let's add that to the background. Intense. Very blue. Warm it. How easy is that? So now the effect is only being applied to the background, and if I switch it, it's only being applied to the foreground. And it works in reverse too. So let's add a skylight filter and open this up. Excellent. We're just gonna do a control line here. All right, so it's only adding it to, I'll just say the top half of this. All right, so there's our mask. And here we have include plug-in masks. So let me add, let's just add a couple more here just to make sure that we really have something funky to look at. Let's put the fog on the bottom. Oh, let's just do a control point here and we'll just add the fog down here. Make it really obvious and ugly. When I click on this and I say include plug-in masks, now I've got a control line mask and a control point mask and I'm just gonna say yes to all of those and apply that. There we go. Saving the masks. Now I don't see them right away but I do have to come to the channels button here. Here we go. And there they are. There's that ridiculous one and there's that ridiculous one. <laughs> they are there for us to use. All right, let's jump into Silver Effects and see some of the biggest changes that they've made. All right, the interface of this one is actually quite a bit different from version 7, where we had all of our filters over here. We no longer do. Now this is much more similar to Color Effects. So once you get used to one, now you don't have to, you know, kind of rearrange your thought pattern when you switch over to silver effects from color effects. So our filters are here, last edits, history, and huge bonus, I like to be able to see 
the original color photo so I know what kind of colors I'm dealing with. That is especially helpful when you get over here and you add some of the uh, color filter types to it and you can see exactly what colors you have in your original image. This did not exist in version 7. It is a very nice addition in version 8. Something else that I have been talking about for years is the order of operations in here. Now, if you've seen my Silver Effects 7 full walkthrough, one of the things that I talk about in there is how you would have done black and white photography when you were doing film. And the first thing you do is you choose your film type. So they have actually put that over here. So now you can choose your film type. So let's go ahead and choose... Uh, what was one of my favorites? T-Max was one of my favorites, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you can come in here and make all of these smaller changes. Again, I'm not going to do a full walkthrough here. I just want to show you some of the major changes. So in this one, the major change is essentially the interface and the order of the things that you do, because film types used to be buried down at the bottom, which drove me nuts. And now it's right where it should be. Let's start there. And now I'm going to add uh, a filter. So let's add a color filter. Now you can't add it twice in color effects. You can add these things again and again, but this turns into a minus when you add it over here. So let's uh, close that and open up our color filter here. So the color filter is now at the bottom. Let's collapse film type so I can just see it here. There we go. So if I added a red filter or a blue filter. That's kind of neat. Green filter. So again, because I have the color version right down here to reference, this is very helpful. So if I want to affect those yellows, yellow filter. And then we get into all of the other things. We've got basic adjustments. We've got selective tones, clear views, some toning. So if you wanted to give it an all over selenium tone blue toners, the usual. All right, I'm not going to go through the whole software. I keep saying that. I know. I can't help myself. I just get in here and I start playing and I have fun. All right, similar to what we talked about in color effects is the option to export or do a quick export as either a TIFF or a JPEG. Previously, it was just a JPEG. You can bring it to another software. And I have set the default as being a smart object, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, same thing, you can include any plugin masks that you have created, just like we did with color effects. So click on smart object, and click apply, and there it is. So we can turn that layer off and on. We can take advantage of the mask. If we want to make some changes, we can double click on that smart layer and open it right back up, and everything is just as we left it. I'm going to go ahead and click on the output sharpener and it's very similar to what we had before other than those few options again the quick export the layer options including masks exporting as a smart object changing the preferences all of these locations are very similar from one nick product to another which is fantastic i love the continuity I love that these are now accessible right here all the time and I don't have to grab that NIC selective tool and move it around, which is what I was fighting with all the time. Um, I loved it. You know, it's great to have all of those options just as a quick and easy access uh, with the click of a button, but I, I was. I was pushing it all over the place to get it out of the way of my, my actions and my history and my property panel and things like that. So that is no longer an issue. And I will be doing full walkthroughs of primarily color effects and silver effects because those are the two most popular programs here very soon, and just like the Nick Collection 7. So if you have not seen those and you want to see the, what you might expect with the Nick Collection 8, go ahead and I'll, I'll link those in the description for you so that you can uh, check those out. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Enjoy the new updates.